All right, this is going to be Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In This is going to be part three of Take Heed. Let's turn the Bible to Deuteronomy 24, verse 7. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, and we're talking about kidnapping here. That's what the modern legal term is. If any man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel and maketh merchandise of him, in other words, holding for ransom, or selleth him, in other words, uh, sell him to somebody else as a slave, then that thief shall die. See, this was a capital crime. Kidnapping was punishable by death, as was murder, as was rape, as was uh, uh, blasphemy against the Lord, you know, and witchcraft and Satanism. But uh, in modern day law, we don't consider those things, well, the state doesn't consider those things as being worthy of death anymore so but the lord wanted people put to death for capital crimes i mean that was it uh, then that thief shall die and thou shalt put evil away from among you verse 8 listen carefully take heed take heed in the plague of leprosy that thou Observe diligently and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you as I command them, so ye shall observe to do. Now, leprosy was a communicable or contagious type disease. It was very bad. I mean, your fingers and toes would just fall off. They would just basically rot off your body. It was really bad. Um... In the 1950s, there was about two dozen people in the entire United States that had leprosy. About two dozen, if I memory serves me correctly. And there was an island near Louisiana where they held them to kept them separate. Well, to find leprosy today, you have to go to places like India and Haiti, uh, Haiti is where they come up with zombies and voodoo. And uh, since we've been, South Florida has been flooded with Haitians, there's now more cases of, of leprosy in just Dade County, which is Miami, South Florida. Uh, it's called Miami-Dade County. Uh, there's more cases of leprosy in Miami-Dade County, Florida, alone than there was and in the entire United States in the late 50s because of all the Haitians we have here, you know, the voodoo worshipers and uh, what have you. So, but God commanded separation, quarantine for leprosy and other diseases because, you know, you didn't want, uh, you've heard the expression, one bad apple will ruin the barrel. Well, guess what? Yeah, that's what uh, quarantine, that's where it came from, the Bible. In uh, Deuteronomy, in, in the book of Leviticus, verse 9, Remember what the Lord thy God did unto Miriam, by the way, after that ye were come forth out of Egypt. All right, so, all right, let's, uh, we'll just kind of breeze through some things here. here. In Joshua 22, verse 5, but take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. And there's people will tell you today that if you're doing this, that you're trying to earn your salvation. Joshua 23 and verse 11. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord 
your God. Now, in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 2, verse 1, King David is getting ready to die and giving advice to his son Solomon. Now, the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. That the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children... Take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul. There shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. So, in other words, if uh, as long as King David's children followed the Lord, there would always be a king from the line of David on the throne of Israel. Well, they didn't do it, and... God, um, God gave them Nebuchadnezzar as a king, king of Babylon. But when you realize that Christ is of the line of David, and he's going to be, well, he is a king in heaven, but one day he's going to be king here on earth. So that, will, that prophecy will come true. 1 Kings 8.25 Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that thou promised, promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. All right, let's go to 1 Chronicles chapter 28, starting in verse 8. 28, 8. Now, David's getting ready to go, and Solomon is going to build the first temple. That's the background. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, Keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. And thou, Solomon, my son, and thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of my father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind for the Lord searcheth all hearts. Oh, that's scary, people. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth all the imagination of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. You know, when you look for the Lord with all your heart, he's going to find you. You won't have to find him. He'll find you. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. In the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 19, verse 5, And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, Judah city by city, now, the judges were, back then, were, you know, just like the judges of today. They were to hear cases and decide who was right and who was wrong. Verse 6, And said to the judges, Take heed what ye do. For ye judge not for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Wherefore now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you, 
Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. What's a taking of a gift? A bribe. Just because some rich person gives you some money and says, oh, my case is coming up next week against this poor person. I want you to take this and keep that in mind when the case comes up. Well, <laughs> you know, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of person, nor taking of gifts. Moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites and of the priests and of the chief of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. And Jehoshaphat was a good king, one of the few. All right, I think this is going to be the end for the Old Testament. Let's go to Malachi chapter 2, verse 14. Yet ye say, Wherefore, because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. Now, a lot of men, uh, when they marry somebody and, you know, maybe 30, 40 years go by and uh, maybe not even that much, and the wife, and he's accumulated some wealth. Uh, and then you get some young, attractive gold digger, uh, female, and then she entices men. And let's face it, men are um, attracted to beauty. And the wife of your youth, she's not so pretty like she used to be anymore. And I've seen that a bunch of times, especially among wealthy people uh, they dump they dump their uh, wife yeah they dump their wife and then marry a, an attractive young woman that's even younger than their daughter I've seen that a bunch of times but the Lord says yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant and did not he make one see in the the, uh, let's see, let me take a look. Well, what does the Bible say about a marriage? In Genesis 2, 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. And God doesn't want men to be mama's boys. He wants them to cut those apron strings. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Matthew 19, 5. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. Verse 6. Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together let not man put asunder. Uh, let's see. 1 Corinthians 6.16 6, What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Ephesians 5.31 For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they, sh and they too shall be one flesh. So, Malachi 2, 14. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one? That he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord the God of Israel saith, that he hateth putting away. What is putting away? Divorce. God hates divorce. Except for fornication. Or, well, adultery, actually. For the Lord thy God 
of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away, for one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. Ye have wearied the Lord with your words, yet ye say, Wherein have we wearied him? When ye say, Every one that doeth good, I'm sorry, correction. When ye say, Every one that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord. I mean, don't you hear that even today in churches? They say, Well, you know, even though we do things that God doesn't like, God loves us anyways. Everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord. I, this is the, this is conde condemnation, people. Uh, when ye say, Everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them. Oh, yeah. Or they say, Where is the God of judgment? Oh, they're going to find out one day. Yeah, where's the God of judgment? Well, let's see. In Jude chapter 1 and verse 15, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Who? 2 Peter 3, 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. I hope that word isn't used in, when, when the Lord opens the books to, speaking to me, uh, that word ungodly. Uh, 2 Peter 2.9 The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. First John chapter 4. Oh, let's see. Verse 15. You see, judgment, everybody's going to be judged, but some are going to be wrath. I mean, even believers are going to have judgment, but there's a difference between judgment and wrath. 1 John 4, 15, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed that the love that God hath to us, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment boldness. You know why we can be bold? Because we have God's only begotten Son as our defense attorney when it comes time for judgment. Think about that. Can you imagine having the judge's son as your attorney? Ah, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. When you know, when you love the Lord and you know the Lord loves you, I mean, there's no fear. So, all right, I'm going to close this out. This is the uh, part three, the uh, the end of the old testament on the take heed and uh, we're going to open up part four with the uh, the words of christ probably tomorrow and uh, 
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Him in Jesus' name. Amen.